In years gone by, the more privileged Scottish towns had the prerogative of pit and gallows, and when royal charters were issued for the formation of royal boroughs, the sovereign empowered the magistrates to include a hangman in their list of officials. In towns where circuit courts were held, executioners were to be retained in order to carry out the letter of the law handed down on criminals. But as the years passed, finding a hangman proved more difficult, so it fell to hardened criminals to take up the post, many of them doing so to avoid the noose themselves. They had to promise to fulfil the task as finisher of the law, and in some boroughs the hangman received a sum of money for each execution he carried out. It was the right of these Scottish towns to impose a tax of a ladleful of grain on every sack of corn or meal exposed for sale in the local market. The ladle was set to the highest bidder every year, except when the borough had a hangman. He received the ladleful as part of one of the perks of the job. When the hangman was engaged in the borders town of Selkirk in October 1719, the ladle had already been set, and by way of compensation he was given a shilling a day, until an agreement was made with the taxman. The executioner in Selkirk was paid £4 Scots for every execution he carried out, and one mark for each one he branded or scourged through the town. These were additional payments to his salary, and dues from the ladle from all the bags of salt or fish sold in the public market. Jedburgh was known for the Jeddart justice, hang a man first and hold his trial later, but the hangman was actually given the iron ladle or pan so he could help himself to the grain or meal of his allowance. This has been preserved in the local museum. On the handle it bears the initials JBMI, but what they stand for is unknown, possibly the initials of a bailey, magistrate or hangman. In Kelso, a similar ladle was given to the local hangman, but it was smaller in size. It was known as the hangman's ladle, which he used to take his meal or flour from the open sacks at Kelso Market. The common hangman from Edinburgh and Perth also had this privilege to extract a small quantity of meal and so on from each sack exposed for sale in the local market. In Stirling, the hangman's measure was called a cop, a vessel containing a wooden basin with a hinged cover. Here, the hangman was also entitled to a weekly allowance of meal from each vendor at the weekly market and also butter, and in the local taverns, if he went up to a group drinking, they were obliged to fill his wooden quake. This was restricted, however, to one pub, one group, and only once a day. In Inverness, the hangman was not only just allowed his quota of oatmeal, but also 36 peats weekly from the taxman, a bushel of coals from imported coal from England when it arrived, as well as as large a piece of Scottish coal as he could carry. He was also entitled to a penny for each sack of oatmeal sold, a fish from every creel or basket brought to the fish market, a peck of salt from every cargo, and a suit of new clothes every year, and two pairs of shoes. In Dumfries, the hangman went to the town on market days and put his large spoon in various sacks, extracting a large measure of grain, meal, flour and so on. As time passed, the local farmers objected to the tradition, but they were told in no uncertain terms it was the law and the hangman was legally entitled to what he was due by law. As a result of this, the Dumfries market was boycotted for a time by the farmers. The ladle used by the Dumfries executioner was lost for a time, but
But in 1818, antiquarian Joseph Train brought the rusty ladle to light and gifted it to Sir Walter Scott. In all the royal boroughs, the hangman had use of a house that was tied to the job. In Edinburgh, this was found in Hangman's Close in the Cowgate, and in Stirling, that house was to be found at the end of the old toll booth, with its entrance on St John Street. Some were better than others, but all had a bed and bedding, and basics such as pots, bowls, a cup, and a few utensils. In Aberdeen, the hangman had the privilege to help himself to peat out of every cart and a fish out of every creel on market days. Johnny Milne, a farm labourer, had been found guilty of stealing beehives on Don's side, but instead of his sentence of seven years' transportation in 1806, he was offered the job of hangman. He was paid seven pounds ten shillings for six months' work, and he and his family settled into the hangman's house. But he made full use of the perks, helping himself to fish at the weekly market. He was also entitled to the clothes of the hanged man, but when he hanged Margaret Shuttleworth in Montrose in 1821, he declined the offer of her clothes. At Cullen in 1675, it was ordained that the executioner Andrew Wilson should get a fish out of every basket of every fisherman on his return from sea. He was also entitled to a peat and a piece of firewood out of every load sold in the town. He also received three pounds Scots yearly out of the common good to purchase a suit of clothes. John Weir, or Sutherland, was appointed hangman on 5th November 1700 by the Sheriff Depute of Kincardenshire, James Keith, and he was to receive a peck of meal, or equivalent in money, every week. He too was given a house to live in. In the agreement, he was to carry out his duties diligently, or, under the pain of highest corporal punishment, he would find himself in trouble. In January 1834, the post of hangman was abolished in Aberdeen. The last hangman to be employed by the authorities in Scotland was John Scott, with executions being undertaken by the likes of William Calcraft, wherever he was needed. Scott had returned to Edinburgh as the official hangman, being paid 12 shillings a week, with an additional £5 a year from the Exchequer. He also received an extra payment for each person he hanged and for each flogging he carried out. He was murdered near his home in Edinburgh on 14th August 1847 by John E. Day. If you enjoyed this episode of Scotland's History, please like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, thank you for watching.